are going to start dismantling the TBI to get the manifold ready for the Weber carburetor swap. We got it on order. I already got the air cleaner and stuff off. So now we're just going to dive in and uh, a lot of vacuum hoses are going to come off. We'll have to pull the fuel lines off. Um, the EGR is coming off. All the sensors around here will be coming off with it. And uh, try to hopefully keep you up to date as we take everything off. So the first part is the throttle cable. So we loosen this nut here, pull that out. And then the wire comes down in here. There's this little doodad guy that should pop out of there. Here's the cable. Okay, this little pin. You push it towards yourself, towards the front of the truck. Not like that. Hard to kind of tell. There's your throttle cable. Put it off to the side. Next up is taking off the fuel line in and the fuel line return. We're gonna unscrew those and shove in some bolts and screw them back down, put them off to the side, and continue our journey. All right, fuel lines are off. Push them over to the side because obviously we'll need those again. And now I'm just kind of going to work myself from the top. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to pull off all the vacuum lines because some vacuum lines, I think they just come back into the unit. So first off, I'm just going to go through and start doing some of the sensors I know. So you got the MAP sensor here, so we'll unplug that. TPS sensor here, we'll unplug that. Um, we'll unplug the sensor that goes to the, uh, or the, the plug that goes to... I don't know, the throttle body fucking bullshit. I don't know the names of everything, but keep going. Uh, all the uh, vacuum lines and everything pulled off, all the plugs. I'm pretty sure I got everything. Obviously, once you start pulling everything off, you can see if you've forgotten anything. But I think that's everything. So now we're going to take a 12 millimeter wrench. And there should be four. One, two, three, and... Let's see where it's at. Four. Kind of, they're kind of hard to get to, but get those off, and hopefully this whole thing should just pull right up. Gasket it on there, so it's kind of was kind of stuck on there. So everything should come off. So let's try to pull it straight up, just like that, y'all. There she is. Got the throttle body off, and there was another plate on it. I'm not sure if I'm going to need it or not, but I just took it off for now, anyways, because if it does need to go back on, I'll put a new gasket on it. Um, anyways, next up is going to be taking off the EGR valves. I think this is the main EGR valve, and that's like, I don't know, an accessory to it, because there's obviously one vacuum line that runs to it, so we don't need those. So we'll pull these off, and then we'll actually have to obviously make a block off plate for the EGR there. So yeah, we'll just get this pulled off first. And there's actually a tube that comes back around to the exhaust. So, I'll see if I can undo that, otherwise it'll have to be welded up or something. EGR valve out. I'm actually in the process, these actually have studs in them. So I'm doing the trick where you thread two nuts on. So we'll thread one all the way on. And then we'll jam nut the second one. And then once the first one, second one's jam nutted, you gotta make sure you get it on there really tight. Then you use the first one to break the stud loose and back the stud out. Um, but I was having a hell of a time. There's not really a good way to get a wrench in here big enough to fit this guy right there. So I cut it off, figuring I could get a socket on there. And I can, but it is not budging. So I'm gonna try some... Uh, Something to free up, maybe if it's all rusted in there. This part of the EGR was not hard to take off. Got the studs out and everything. But this side, the port that goes into the the uh, the header, um, you know, it did not want to move. I tried heat, WD-40, huge breaker bars, uh, anything that could actually fit back there because it's so tight. If you look at my hand, it's how tight it is to the firewall. Um, and it wasn't moving. And I really did not feel like pulling the header off. So I just went and grabbed the Harbor Freight welder because I'm not near a 220 volt outlet. And I still got that old guy all the way from back in the day. 
and that we put some booger welds on the back so hopefully it should all be plugged up and fairly good um, probably eventually I'll pull this thing off and actually weld it properly but it is plugged for now and it feels pretty sealed up if there's any sort of leaks it's gonna be minute so it shouldn't be a huge deal I just didn't want a big gaping hole right there but that's all done so now we got put some paper in here so a bunch of shit doesn't get in there I'm gonna have to clean this um, surface up when it comes time and I don't know yet until I get the kit on what things need to be plugged off or anything like that. So I'm going to leave all that for now. Some paper? Some more paper? Oh, thank God. They give you everything. Cool. All right. What we got going on? We got brackets for the throttle cable, throttle cable, couple uh, bar fittings, some hose clamps. Got our aluminum adapter plates, redline fuel regulator in this guy. So we'll have to get that all hooked up. I wasn't sure what they were going to do here, but they actually did give you, they supplied some hoses. All right, some hoses, our actual air filter that goes on top of the Weber. See in there? Here's our actual Weber. There she is. Read up on the instructions and start the install. Got everything laid out nicely. Make sure you have a mocha. <laughs> so we have hopefully a clean area to work. So let's get started. All right, so we got to remove these studs. So using the trick like we did on the EGR studs, you take two nuts. No. All right, so here's the EGR plate, and obviously we need to block this off, otherwise we'll have a huge vacuum leak. Um, so I plasma cut a 3 16 block off plate, super simple. We're gonna use the uh, the gasket that comes with it um, and then obviously we had to pull the studs out so I found some other uh, bolts that fit cut them down so they're not too long so we can get this guy in there first we hit the whip then we hit that nay nay right. so here we are we got our paper gasket cardboard gasket here All right got this guy here obviously goes one way with the tapers we got some Loctite we went and grabbed some Loctite I don't know what Loctite to use so we're gonna use red it actually calls for seven to nine foot-pounds which is like nothing so we are not going to turn this Allen on its side. I repeat, do not turn your Allen on its side. So this goes here, obviously, because of how those holes are. The, the machine face down. So we got this plate on. We got the studs in. I uh, figured out that this spacer is only if the butterflies are hitting the adapter plate and I put the carb on there doesn't seem to be hitting so we're not going to use that we're going to put our paper gasket on like that and put this guy on top we're going to have to trim On the inner side right here, it's touching the carburetor, so we're going to have to go sand that down a little bit. It sounds like it should be a good idea to transition this this valve that has some coolant, or the hose, I mean. Uh, and then, then this port also has coolant, so we're just going to, we got a split splice bar fitting to put onto here. Like that. Throw that over there like that. And grab this one. 
like so. And we will push that guy into here. That's our barb. This is our return, so I'll be going to the return line. Uh, we're going to make this one our inlet from the fuel filter. And then this one's going to go directly over to the carburetor. And uh, this bracket was at a 45 degree. I don't know if it's meant to go at a certain particular spot or if it's universal. Um, so I just bent it back to a 90 and there's a bolt hole right here that's not being used. So that's what we're going to use for now. I might change this up, make my own bracket later on, but for right now we're just trying to get this set up and running. Make sure it runs. And then once it runs, we can uh, do the detail stuff. Ta-da! All right. Fuel return. Clamp her down. Fuel return is clamped. Cut that bitch. Okay, clampy. Done. Boom, boom. I think that should work. Everything that I had troubles with, so you guys kind of know what to do. Um, anyways, so I think where we left off is we got the carburetor on, we got this bracket on. Uh, I figured out this net was moving, so I finally got it to move so I can bend the bracket back a little more. Um, this bracket, I really don't like it. I ended up taking two washers and cutting a slit into them to slide around the shaft right here because the way they made this bracket it's too big and the nut wants to start pulling through so i'll probably end up remaking this bracket and if i do i will definitely offer it for sale so people can actually have a, a bracket that actually works um, also the kit did not come with a spring return now i know the throttle body does spring back but it needs a really a, a pretty strong string pullback to make sure it's going back into the idle position because without this in here it actually doesn't go all the way back and then you got a really high idle so um i just uh you can get like springs at lows and stuff i had this one laying around the house and there's a little hole down at the bottom of the bracket so i put that part there and then i actually just drilled a hole in the bracket for the throttle cable so I'm not going to do it because you'll, you'll push gas through, but, um, you know, when you give it some gas, it holds tension. It actually gives you a little better pedal feel. I might even put a stiffer spring in um, because without this, your pedal feel is nothing. Like I said, you'll have a high idle because it won't return all the way back. So definitely make sure to put a spring in. Pretty easy. Um, we've got all the fuel stuff finished up and hooked up. I ended up putting a fuel... Um, over here you can't see the gauge of it but I ended up putting a fuel gauge in there because I figured how else are you going to figure out how much pressure you're sending to your carb because the carb wants this particular one wants 1.5 to 3 psi max you don't want anything less than anything more so there was a port here and I was lucky enough I actually had a fuel gauge laying around pressure gauge uh, mine's 0 to 15, so I popped that in there, and we got her dialed down to just under 3 PSI. Um, you leave the vacuum port on the regulator open, um, and then your end comes to the front of the regulator. Uh, either side will go to your carb, and the bottom's the return, obviously. Simple enough there. Um, and then a lot of times they call for the wire to go to the alternator, but I really did not want to go to the alternator. So... If you can see here, hard to see. This was actually one of the um, sensors for the MAF or the TPS or something. We don't need it. Uh, so I probed around to find hot ignition. And I managed to find hot ignition on this one. That's just the four wire. It ended up being the black and white wire right here. Um, also note, um, let me find it. I don't know what they expect you to do with this. But this is literally a foot long and was no good. 
so you're gonna probably have to need a longer wire but I have plenty of wire laying around so we got that hooked up that goes to the electric choke um, when I started the truck up the electric choke uh, did was working um, the idle was a bit fast so the adjustment for the cold idles on the back side here and I managed to turn that to get it more proper and then in fact it after it warmed up it clicked down to your regular idle and after we got the spring set we figured out kind of where we want our idle for right now um, other than that I have not messed with the mixture screws the truck seems to be running fairly well and I really don't feel comfortable with touching this quite yet so I'm just gonna leave it and maybe have uh, some more experience mess with those and other than that uh, you just plug the uh, vacuum on the carb, the one vacuum which is back here by the electric choke. And I just, like I said, spliced into the water sleeve or the coolant where it comes through, plugged off the left side over here. And these don't need any. I actually had plugs on this, these two little guys right here, if you can see them. You see those? Yeah, you see them? Uh, I had the plugs on them, and then when I shut the truck off and restarted it, it was running like shit, and I came out here, both plugs were gone. So, uh, I was like, fuck. Um, anyways, I decided just to pull this out. I didn't have any block offs the same size, and I know these are like brass or something weird like that. So I just went and I just hammered them shut. I just literally crimped them shut, and I uh, held my finger over them. Uh, and they're sealing they they sealed just fine so and then I screwed that back in so don't have to worry about that uh, we got the EGR block off we plug welded the other side over there from the other day um, your let's zoom out here uh, I'm not sure if this is really necessary but it comes with the kit so I installed it uh, this goes to your valve your valve mm, your valve your valve cover the hose that came off the top of it they supply a 5 8 hose so we got it coming off and there's a little uh, PVC uh, hose bar fitting that goes in the bottom of the air cleaner so we got that in there and ran that and it really needs to be clamped because it does not fit on the uh, hose barb on the this side like it fits like shit so uh, make sure to clamp that down other than that you just bolt your base plate on really simple with the gasket and then these little clips clip the filter on and you're set to go um, I'm trying to think of anything else uh, make sure when you do the install to undo your battery they say to undo your gas cap for some reason so I did other than that um, now I'll have to when I have time go back through the plugs that I'm not using anymore there's quite a few of them and uh, yeah, everything actually seems to be working. I did one test drive so far, it drove fine. Uh, like I said, the choke seems to be working. But uh, yeah, I'll probably come back with maybe an update video later on to tell you how the longevity of this is. Uh, I think, I don't have any carb clean or anything. I'm pretty sure all these plates seem to be, there's no noticeable signs of air leaking or fuel leaking, so. Um, I guess that's good for now unless I get some car cleaner to test it out and see if anything happens. Um, yeah. So I guess we're going to a show this weekend now. But I'm going to drive this around, make sure it runs well before that, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Anyways guys, I hope this kind of gave you a more in-depth look on how this is installed. I wasn't treating this as a how-to. I was just going through the processes that I had to deal with. Um, we'll see how well this thing lasts uh, I've been able to start and stop it a whole bunch without any issues my original issues why I replaced this uh, throttle body for the Weber was I would start the truck it would run fine cold I could run it for half an hour hour plus you know but if I had to stop turn the truck off and go to a, go into a store and come back out ten minutes later the truck did not want to idle it had very uh, it did not want to move either once it once you got the idle going when you're driving it it had a lack of power uh, I took it to two shops 
it was at one shop for three weeks, it was at another shop for a week and a half. Um, and then I tried to replace some stuff before that with the sensors. And after taking them to a couple shops and talking to a bunch of people, it pretty much sounded like something in the throttle body or the sensors to the throttle body was fucking it up. So I decided instead of tr spending more money on people diagnosing the issue, a lot of people were just saying swap for a Weber because you get rid of all the sensors, there's no vacuum lines, and uh, well fuck, I think it works. So that's going to do it for today guys. I got to go take a shit, but as always, keep on trucking. Peace.